Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to the fourth episode of the Sparky Game Engine series. Last time we added input handling so that we could, for example, see where this fantastic mouse is in our rectangle, in our just awesomely graphically complicated rectangle here. Um, and that's all there, which is fantastic. So now we can finally move on to maths. Um, so maths is generally quite important in game engines um, and it's going to allow us to do wonderful things such as draw things on the screen in the correct position. So, um, let's plan out this episode as we always do. And then next episode, which is going to be episode 5, we're going to come up with a game plan for pretty much the rest of the 30 days we have left until Ludum Dare, okay? Um, but today we're just going to plan out this episode. So, maths. Welcome to Cherno's class. Um, so, what we're going to do today is we're going to implement vectors. We're going to implement vectors kind of in the sense of point vectors or location vectors rather than direction vectors. So direction vectors we'll do later. And by direction vectors, I just mean they'll have extra um, they'll have, they'll have extra methods such as dot and cross product, for example. Um, but point vectors are just basically ways to store a point whether in 2D space, 3D space, or 4D space. Um, but um, they're basically just ways to draw multiple variables kind of in one class and be able to do um, cool things with them. So what we'll do is we'll make a vec2 class, which will store, which will basically be a two-component vector. So it'll be, a, it'll be a vector which has an x and a y. Um, we'll have a vec3 class, which will have an x, y, and z. And we'll have a vec4 class, which will have an x, y, z, w. Okay, that's it. And then in terms of these, will basically be the same class. Okay, I could really write them as one class and then kind of be smart about how I wrap them or template them or something like that. We're not going to do that any of that fancy stuff for now. Um, we'll keep it simple, especially because we've only got 30 days and I don't want to be writing the 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 maddest maths library around. Um, but um, Oh, yeah, so we'll do that and then we'll have um, methods between them. We'll have obviously our operators. So we'll have stuff like plus, minus, times, um, and divided by, right? Um, and then, I mean, we'll have stuff like, uh, what else? We'll have we'll have probably like a um, an output stream operator and that's really all we'll keep for now. We'll have a, we'll have our comparison operator. And that's it. So we probably won't delve into the finer stuff of that. That'll be it. Um, because I don't want to make this video two hours long. Mat 4. So this is going to be our matrix class. It's going to be a 4x4 four four matrix. Um, the uh, the ordering, okay, and I'll try and write a bit nicer, I think. I'm really quite tired right now. The, or the ordering will be column major, okay, because that's what OpenGL takes. Obviously, OpenGL can transpose it as well, but we're going to just do it in column major because we have to choose a major. <laughs> it's going to be column major. So what that means is that when we... Um, essentially, what that means is that this is how the matrix goes. 0, 1, 2, 3. It goes down like that. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15. So basically, um, yes, that is how it goes, I believe. I might be wrong. Let me just quickly double check. I always get confused with this. So I just want to make sure that I'm completely, completely right. So, yes. Yes, I'm correct. Good. Um, so that's the plan. And then this will, this will be a bit more of a complicated class. All right. So right now we will put in, um, uh, let's see. So we'll start off, we'll, we'll have a multiplication. We'll have an actual operator as well as our fantastic multiply function or method rather, um, and then we'll have um, projection matrices such as, uh, let's see, we'll have an orthographic, we'll have a perspective, and etc. Um, and then we'll have um, some transfer transformation matrices such as a translation matrix, a rotation matrix, and a scale matrix. All right, and that is pretty much it. Cool, cool. So, oh, oh, and I almost forgot. Um, our matrix four will be 
essentially just um, ra uh, just a wrapper for a float array which has 16 floats in it, of course, because 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so that is it. That is our matrix, and that is our vectors, and that, of course, equals maths. So, let's begin. Under source, I'm going to make a new item called... Uh, it's going to be a header file, and it's going to be called... Um, we'll, we'll start with a vec2. It's going to be called vec2. Okay, um, and let's see here. So I'll, Pragma wants that. I'll also go ahead and make a... Lol, I forgot to make the folder I wanted to make. So let's make a folder called Maths. I'm going to put an S on the end because that's how I spell it. Um, we'll put the Vec2 in there. Um, we'll go ahead and add this to the awesome namespace of Sparky and then Maths namespace maths um, then we'll make a class called we'll make this a struct for now so I'll quickly explain the difference in a minute because there really is no difference um, struct vec2 okay so the difference between a struct and a class really is the fact that um, in a struct um, the default visibility modifier is public whereas in a class the default visibility modifier is private. Apart from that, they have the exact same functionality, they can be used the same way. That's really all there is to it. Now, the reason I'm choosing a struct is because these X and Ys are going to be public. So, yes, I'm going to choose a, whoops, I'm going to choose a struct, okay? So, yeah, pretty advanced. <laughs> pretty awesome. So, in this struct, we'll have um, a float X and Y, okay? And then we'll have a vec2. Um, this will be just a default constructor, which will take in nothing. We'll also have... Um, by the way, one thing I want to mention is I am kind of breaking our convention for classes and structs and whatever by having a lowercase. Usually you would uppercase a class or a struct. However, I'm lowercasing it. And the reason I'm doing this is so that it matches GLSL's syntax. So in the OpenGL shading language, vectors and math and matrix, 4x4 four four matri matrices are expressed like this and like that, okay? So um, basically just ma matching GLSL so that we kind of have a consistency amongst that. Um, if you guys want to name it uppercase or whatever, you can do so, but Sparky is going to be like this. So this will take in a float X and a float Y. And I mean, it might as well take in references lol. Um, so we've done that. Um, what else are we gonna have? So I'll probably start with just having a bunch of operators and whatnot. Um, so, for example, we'll have, let's plan this out. So, we'll have a vec2, so we'll have add. Okay, we'll make both actual methods and operators for all of these. So, you'll see how this works. We'll make the methods first. So, we'll take in, um, so we'll add another um, vec2, and we'll do the same for subtract. multiply and divide okay so what this will do this will return the current object as well in case you want to do something like that um, you probably won't be these can be used by themselves by returning kind of void but we'll return this as well all right um, and it will affect the current ob object of course because it is it's just returning a reference to the current object it's not going to um, make a new one or anything like that um, those are our basic those are really our basic functions so let's start implementing them if I go ahead and make a new item, I'm going to make a cpp file called vec2.cpp. I'm going to include our um, vec2.h header file. I'm going to grab our namespace and push it in here. Visual Studio will try and assist us here, but I'm going to fight it. Um, so vec2, vec2, this is our constructor. I'll set x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. For our non-default constructor, where we take in a const float x and a const float y, we'll just set lol. Okay, we'll set this dot x um, equal to x and this y equal to y. Okay, um, and then we'll move on to implementing everything else. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide. 
let's grab that and start implementing it. So addition is going to be pretty basic and pretty simple and I'm sure everyone knows how to do this. Um, all we'll be doing is we'll be grabbing our current mate. So we're just we're doing it to the current thing, right? We're going to say x plus equals other dot x, okay? And y plus equals other dot y. That's really all there is to it. And then we're going to return a reference to the current object. So we need to dereference it um, like this. And then that's, yeah, that's it. Okay, so we add it and then we return the current object. And I'll tell you why we're doing this last step in a minute. Um, okay, cool. Oh, uh, yeah, so I, again, you, you can make this like void, for example, but I haven't and you will see why in a minute. Okay, just because we can still use it as if it was void, but if we want to um, grab a reference and apply other op other operations, we can do so. So we've got add, let's uh, implement the other ones. So add, subtract, um, multiply, and divide. Okay, cool. So these are literally going to be uh, the same, except this is going to be a subtract. This is going to be multiply. I'm so lazy. I'm just kind of like drawing a box around it. <laughs> and this is going to be divide. Okay, cool. And then we're returning this and that's it. So done. Yeah, pretty basic. And it is completely awesome. So let's quickly make an output stream operator. So in Java, there's this, and in C Sharp, there's this thing called toString, okay? And essentially, it lets us be all cool and be like, you know what, if I make a vector, so let's quickly include this so that we can use it. Um, uh, this is main. So, source, maths, vec2. So, if I um, use namespace maths as well. Uh, if I go ahead and make a vec2 called vector and let's just say I make it uh, 1.0 and 1.0 will be cool, we'll make it 1.0 and 2.0 um, let's get rid of this stuff I can be all cool and actually print it so I can be like that, right? it's the same thing as if, you know, in Java if we were to go system dot out dot print line and we actually give it an object such as that vector, okay? and similar thing in C Sharp if we go ahead and go console dot write line uh, and we give it that vector okay so to, to, to in order to do that in C++ we just need to overload this operator and say that you know what it can take this so to do that um, we have to do a few things first of all it can't be a part it can't be a member of this class it has to be just a it has to be outside of this class because obviously um, we don't call vector dot C out we call C out and then we pass in a vector um, but we also want to be able to access um, private functions or private um, private members. Now we don't have any private members in this in this case. Everything's public. But just to be just to stick with the convention, I'm still going to mark this as a friend. So we use this um, last episode. I didn't really explain it too much, but essentially a friend just lets you access private members of a certain class as if you were in the class, right? But you're not. So when I do this, um, I'm also going to include IO stream, by the way. And we'll probably um, eventually put all this stuff into pre-compiled headers. But for now, um, we'll keep this as is. So friend std o stream reference. And this is this is just the standard way to implement an, um, the output operator, the output stream operator, um, which you guys can find anywhere online. Um, so std uh, stream uh, operator. So operator overloading is something in C++ that I should probably mention because I forgot to talk about that in my introduction to C++ video. Basically, we have the ability to change operators in C++. Um, C Sharp can do this to an extent, and Java can't do it at all. And C++ can do it for pretty much everything. So what that means is operators such as plus, minus, equals, times, ampersand, divided by, modulus, all of this cool stuff, we can actually change what they do. Okay, so in other words, if I go ahead and I add two vec2 objects together, so I go and say like vector plus vector, we can actually, instead of having to go vector.add vector, which is what you would have to do in Java, um, we can actually test, we can actually customize the functionality of this plus operator. So this is kind of what we're doing here with um, this output stream operator, and then we're using um, the word, the keyword operator here before we actually mention the operator. Okay, so um, we've mentioned the operator. Now we have to take in. Um, so we're returning uh, a reference to a stream. We're taking in a stream, 
and then we're taking in a const reference to the current object that was. So this is the object that we're actually um, outputting. So const vec2 vector. All right. So let's grab this again. It doesn't really need to be a friend in this case, but whatever. We'll keep it as that. All right. Cool. So you can see it's not part of this class. Okay. That just because it's this operator and it shouldn't be part of this class. Um, what we basically need to do here is use stream as if it was because C out is a type of output stream. Um, so we simply go ahead and say stream. Uh, we might want to say something like, uh, I don't know, vec2 or something. Um, I really don't know what the, yeah, we'll just, we'll probably say something like vec2 and then maybe a bracket. Um, and then we'll output vector.x. So if x was private, we could still act, it, it is public in this case, but if it was private, we could still access it because this is marked as a friend. All right, cool. So vector x um, and then vector dot y, and then we'll just output our final bracket and that's it. We won't output an end line because usually you would do that yourself here, um, especially if you wanna do a bunch of stuff, you, just, you don't usually output an end line. And then finally, we just return the stream, all right? Okay, and now you can see that if I was, was to run it, and I'll just make it pause like here, for example. So I'll put a breakpoint there. Uh, you should see that it outputs, as you can see, vec2 vec and then one comma two. All right, great. So that is how that works. Um, cool, so if I was to go ahead and say vector dot add, um, let's just say five and two, uh, lol, what am I doing? Vector dot add five. Well, what do I? Lol, how do I even use this? Oh, it needs to take in a vector. Lol. <laughs> I just wrote my own method and then I used it incorrectly. Five and two, yeah. And I run this. Um, and let's put that breakpoint here again. Uh, you can see it should give us six four because one plus five is six and two plus two is four. All right. Let me quickly make this uh, font a bit bigger here. Um, like 20 maybe. Okay. Yep. There we go. Six, four. Fantastic. So let's stop that. Um, now the cool thing is because we're returning a reference and the reason I made it return a reference to the current object is we can do some cool stuff like vector dot add dot add, and we can keep doing that and we can add another one, one. So instead of being six, four, for example, uh, it is now should be seven five, and as you can see, it's seven five. All right, so we can do some pretty cool stuff like that. And additionally, you can do this. Um, yeah, you can do this like this pretty much straight away. So it's really, it's really um, quite useful. And then of course we can subtract it as well, and then we can do whatever we want with that stuff. So there we go. Cool. Right. All right. Awesome. So vector two is basically implemented. Um, now it would be nice, of course, if we were to use um, some operators, okay, such as um, you know plus minus the actual operators that we're used to. So to do that, um, we basically it's going to be the same, right? Except in, it 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 is basically going to be exactly the same in terms of how we actually um, write it and in terms of what we're returning and all of that stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> but one thing we have to note, we have, one thing we have to note is that when you're doing something like plus, yeah, it's quite common to just mark it as, um, essentially an operator that isn't part of this class. So essentially as a friend. Okay. So for example, if we were to say operator plus, just like that, usually you'd mark it. You don't have to mark it as a friend, but we're going to mark it as a friend. And it's going to be the plus operator. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to take in two. Okay. So this is going to be. Um, yeah, so it'll take in the first, um, it'll take in the left and it'll take in the right. Okay. So vec, um, two left and then vec two right. Okay. One of them is going to be normal, no const, no nothing, because this is the one that's actually going to be modified. And then right is going to be the one that we're reading from. Uh, if I go into vec 2 cpp and then we take a look, we take a look at this. Oops. Uh, vec2, so we have, so it's a friend, so we don't have the thing. We just have operator plus, um, and then we have vec2 left, const vec2 
right so this just means what the side of the equation that we're on so if we go, so basically left plus right is how you kind of use this so what we need to do is we need to take left um, we need to uh, in fact we could probably take this in as a reference um, but we basically need to uh, go left or we can even go left dot add right just like that okay that's all we need to do um, because we've already got the add method right why rewrite why rewrite that code um, I will actually mark that as a reference all right cool well okay awesome so there we go so now in um, main if we were to go so let's just say we've got a vector we've got a vector called a which is one and two and then we've got a vector called b which is two and four yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, a equals a, or rather vector vec to c equals a plus b, just like that. Um, now, it's important that we don't mark this as a reference because if we do, it won't get copied. So this will this will actually c will actually be equal to a in this case, which we don't want to happen. Um, but that might be a potentially dangerous thing to do, but we'll leave this like this for now. Um, so if we do uh, run this, we should see... Um, so what did we add again? Uh, so that we should be 3 and 6, right? 3, 6. Okay, fantastic. And now you can see we can actually use this plus operator, which is pretty cool. So um, that is the general um, <clears throat> idea of things. Now let's do the same thing for... All the other operators. So we've got plus, minus, multiplication, <laughs> and divided by, and division. Well, um, so let's implement all these bad boys. Um, I'll go ahead and change these up. So this is minus or subtraction, this is multiplication or times, and then this is division. Um, and then we'll just go left uh, dot subtract, right, left dot, um, uh, what am I doing, multiply, and then divide. One thing I want to mention quickly is you will see me tossing up between whether or not to pass things in as a reference. And all that means is that if I pass in something as a reference, it does not get copied. The actual object itself, the memory address to it essentially gets passed in and it is affecting that same object. Which is why if we modify this as we are here, right, it will actually change this. Okay? It will change this left that gets passed in. In this case, it's totally acceptable. But again, if I do something like this and then I set, uh, I set c.x equal to 100, right, and I print out a, which was the left part of that thing, um, it will set A, you can see I printed out A, but it gave me 100 because I was able to modify A kind of indirectly, right? So it's dangerous to do that. Obviously, if I don't mark this as a reference when I'm on the receiving end, it will get copied into that variable and this will be fine. So that's just something to think about um, when you're designing classes such as this. Um, yeah, so we'll leave it like this. Again, if issues arise, I'm going to revisit this. I haven't done a full kind of plan of how I'm going to do this of course everything that I've done in terms of this has been streamed live I've I never work out I never work on this outside of these streams um, and these videos okay okay cool anyway we've got this so this is nice but what if I want to be able to do something like you know I don't want to have to declare a new like vector called C I want to be able to say a equals a plus B right and that's you know like I want to add B to a right so I could either go a dot add B right and that would be cool but um, if I want to add something, I don't want to have to go A equals A plus B in terms of using operators. Of course, that will work That will work properly, and it will give us 3 and 6, but I want to be able to say A plus equals B, okay? So how do I do that? Well, you have to overload the plus equals operator. So to do that, um, what we want to do is um, plus equals. So plus equals is not a friend. Um, <laughs> It will return a reference, again, the same thing as what this is, because remember, we're returning a reference in the sense that we want to return the reference to A, right? And then, of course, we need to take in B as an actual parameter. So 
when we call this, um, we'll call it um, operator plus equals. We'll take in, uh, of course, we don't want to modify B at all. So we'll be taking it in as a const reference. Again, reference because we don't want to copy it and const because we don't want to change it. Um, and then that'll, that'll just be, I'll call it other. Okay, so that's plus equals. And then I'll do the same thing for, um, uh, for, for all the other ones. Okay, um, let's grab one of them. Let's go back here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now that this this is a not this is not a friend, so it has to be in the vec two name, right? Um, and then all we want to do, remember, is we just want to add other to the current object. So essentially, what we kind of want to do is this plus equal this equals this plus other. And then we want to basically return this. That's basically our game plan. So you can do this however you want. You can do it like this, so that will use the operator. You can um, probably also call add other. That might probably that'll probably look a bit more gracious. Um, and since add will return this, we might as well just return add other. Okay, and then that will just basically make it look nice and clean. Okay. So that's what we can do. Um, and we'll do the same for minus. Uh, and for multiplication and division. So subtract. Multiply. My keyboard's under my desk and I can't see it at all, by the way. <laughs> so that's why I'm continually mistyping. Because it's like one of those, my desk is one of, has one of those things where, you know, the keyboard kind of slides underneath the desk and stuff. And I'm kind of trying to sit close to the microphone. So anyway, <laughs> the setup is not ideal right now. Well, it's, it's, it is, but it's just, it's a bit annoying sometimes. Okay. A plus equals B. So now we should be able to just add in and we should still get that same result of three and six. Okay. Let's try something else like minus or something and make sure everything works. Um, minus one, minus two. Yeah. Seems legit. Um, multiplication, yep, and division. Pretty cool. All right, cool. So there you go. Um, that is pretty much all of the vector operations you could pro probably need for now in terms of the point vector. I can't think of really any other ones that would be useful for vectors as points. Once you get into stuff like um, vectors as directions and you want the cross product and you want the dot product and you know you need all these functions to calculate angles between vectors and perpendicular vectors and well perpendicular well, yeah normals to vectors which is the same as perpendicular um, and all of that stuff uh, you're gonna need a lot more methods and we'll probably deal with that once we get more to maybe stuff like collision detection and um, physics and stuff that actually requires that but for now we won't deal with that at all all right cool so that's our vector 2 class fantastic that's pretty much it um i think i don't think i've missed anything oh equivalence that's a big one so we want to be able to compare two vectors so i want to be able to say um uh a equals b right is that a thing yeah is a equal to b how do i check that well i need to obviously overload the equivalence operator or the comparison operator um, so to do that, um, remember, what does it return? A Boolean, right? It will return a Boolean result. Um, it's going to be the operator equals equals, right? And of course we'll be comparing something else to us. So think of this as just a name. So if this was something like compare, yeah, put a dot here and then put brackets here. That's what your function will look like. This is the this is the thing that calls it. This is the name, which is the equals equals, and then this is the parameter we need b, and then the return value is the return value. So that might be a cool way to think about it if you guys are new to operator overloading and you're not you're not really sure what the syntax is. So that's kind of how it works. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take in a const uh, vec to other, right? Because of course we're not going to be modifying other, hence the const, and it, we don't want to be copying that data. We just want to be reading it. Um, reading the existing data instead of copying it. So that's why the reference is there, the ampersand. Um, and then all we have to do to uh, implement this, I'll just copy this uh, prototype. Um, we'll go down here and we'll say uh, bool vec2 operator equals equals. Um, and then we'll just basically return um, 
x equals other dot x and y equals other dot y. All right. So if we print this, it should print zero. Yes. And then if we, for example, said b um, b minus equals vec two one two. Yeah. It should be one. Okay. Fantastic. So it works. Um, similarly, we want a does not equal operator or, you know, uh, yeah, does not equal operator, I guess. So that's pretty easy to make. Again, it's the same. It's just that it's the not equal to operator. Uh, we can copy and paste um, the prototype here. But remember, in order to not rewrite code, um, all we really have to do is just return the opposite result of what this returns. So we can just say return not this equals other, okay? And that way we, yeah, we can, we don't have to write the same code twice. So if I run this now, we should get zero since they are equal. Um, and then if I got rid of this line of code, you can see they are equal. They're, well, that's true because they are not equal. All right, cool. So there we go, slowly getting through this. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, basically copy and paste this a bunch of times and implement it for VEC 3s and 4s. And I'm probably going to do Matrix next episode, okay? Because I probably want to dedicate a whole episode to that. That'll be quite complicated since we'll be uh, um, implementing all of these various things. And I don't want to make these episodes too long because while that's good for a stream, I don't think that's a great format for actual YouTube videos. So. That's what we'll do. Okay, cool. So let's grab, let's um, let's open this on our on our hard drives. Open containing folder, um, and what I'll do is I'll simply copy and paste this twice. Okay, so we'll call this vec three, and then vec four. Okay, I'll grab um, or in fact I don't have to. If I go show all files here. So I was already in that mode, but if I click the show all files, you can see all these uh, things have like red kind of things because they're not included in our project. If we just select all of them and then hit include in project, they're now included in our project. So let's start with VEC3, of course. Um, we'll change that to a VEC3. Uh, we'll basically just go, if, we, if you hit Control shift f make sure you don't look in the entire solution. Make sure you just look in the current document, okay? And then we want to replace... Um, anything that says VEC2 with VEC3, essentially. So let's replace all. Cool. All right, done. Uh, and then we'll, of course, add um, a Z. Uh, this was a big mistake. I don't know why I actually did that. In fact, uh, it did work, though. Lol. Well, I'm happy then. Um, okay, so I guess we'll give that in there. Um, so we'll have this, we'll have that. Uh, Z, so we got X, Y, Z now. Um, everything else stays the same here. Let's take a look at the CPP file because that'll be quite different. Um, again, we want to do that find and replace. So we're replacing VEC2 with VEC3. Make sure you're looking in the current document. Replace all 47 occurrences. Done. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like if, you, if we go into here, we'll of course add Z. Um, we will change... Um, We will change, um, we'll have to add, to all of these add methods, we'll have to add the Z components. Whoops. Um, and... Lol, that's not what I meant. <clears throat> okay, so, and then of course, since we have just linked, well, since we've just called this code instead of copying and pasting it, we can just, we don't even have to touch this at all, it just works. Uh, to the comparison, of course, we do need to add Z. And of course, to the streaming, um, we want to add, uh, to the input stream, we want to add um, that, okay, and vector Z. Um, and that's it. That should be it. That's all we, that's really all we need to change. <laughs> okay, done. So, um, let's do the same for VEC4 quickly, and then we're done. So, VEC4, 
X, Y, Z, W. So VEC4s are useful for, uh, for example, colors. Um, that's probably the best, easy to explain example. Um, if we have RGBA, uh, red, green, blue, alpha, right? I don't know why I'm doing this manually. Um, so uh, VEC2 replaced with VEC4. And while we're at it, we'll do the same thing for this. Great. Okay, so, um, yeah, we just need to add two more here. Um, Okay, um, let's see, so, um, where are we? Okay, uh, this is done, good, good, uh, VEC4, okay, uh, ZW, everything's coming together now. All right. Um, w Z. Okay. Let's grab this and let's paste it here. Minus, minus, and here, and here. Okay, um, and then we need to add two of these. And this. Okay, cool. There we go. So, um, yeah, so everything's looking good. Right. If we t if we take a look at this now, um, uh, okay. So let's just change this to vec. I'm just okay. We should probably take test vec three as well. So if we um if we got through these and I uh, just need to import. Okay. So one thing I want to mention real quick is that we've got this thing where if we want to have all three of these, yeah, we need to include like three headers, being like vec two, vec three, vec four. Right. It's um. It's some massive, like, just, it's it's kind of annoying. And especially once we have matrix classes and everything, we just want to be able to be like, I want to include maths, and it'll just include everything. So what we're going to do now, temporarily, we might actually put this out into some kind of include directory in the future. But right now, we'll make a new header file called maths, right? And maths will be in the maths directory, and it will simply, uh, we'll make sure that it does have a pragma ones. And then we'll simply include into maths uh, vec2, Vec3 and Vec4, all right? And once we have matrix, we'll include that as well. And now all we have to do, if we want all three of these, we can just be like include maths.h, all right? And eventually we'll probably pop that into like an include directory of its own so that we can be like include maths.h or something like that, right? Uh, but for now, we'll just keep it like this. Okay, cool. So now I've got access to all of these. So if I um, change this now, for example, and we do something like this. Um, <clears throat> so... Let's see. Um, and then I go ahead and... Uh, let's see what I want to do. Um, I just want to basically print this. So let's just print that out. Make sure it worked. I might go ahead and say vec3 equals a plus b. And I'll call this c. Um, and everything will be nice. And I'll print c. And it should work. And it should give us the fantastic value of 3611, okay? Um, which is correct. Um, and then, you know, we can print B, and that'll give us, should give us our original B value. And then we'll print A. And then we'll be like, hang on a minute, that's not right. 
And that is because we've we've done something very bad in our whoops, I just hit the microphone, sorry. We've done something very bad in our plus operator. So if we go back and take a look at this, because what happened there was A actually got modified. A is supposed to be one, two, five, but A changed into three, six, eleven, which is what the same thing as C is. And the reason that happened is because we took in A as a reference. Okay, so do you remember how I hesitated there for a minute? That was correct, that hesitation. So what we want to do is we do not want to take in left as a reference. Okay, we just take it in like this. Um, or optionally, we could probably construct some kind of new object and return it. Probably not a good idea, though. We'll just take in left as a copy like this. Um, and then if we uh, go, on to, go on to the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, go into our implementation file, we'll simply get rid of the reference and it should work lovely. So if I do the same for VEC3 and VEC4, um, so that was just a cool convenient exercise to show you guys that um, the difference between references and not references and whatnot so that all of you people transitioning from um, Java into C++ will have a smoother transition. So. Um, so yeah, but let's quickly print this now. I probably missed, oh yeah, I missed some um, implementation ones, lol. Okay, so uh, where are we? Yes, die, 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 die. Is that it? I guess we'll see if the build succeeds, that's it. Yes, okay, so if we run this, we should have 125, which was our original value for, uh, where's my main? Oh, I'm in main. Um, which was our original value for this. All right, fantastic. So there we go. Um, that is going to wrap up this episode. I'm going to quickly check out VEC4 though. So let's just say we did have a color such as um, 0.2. This is what I usually like setting my clear. In fact, I think that's what our clear color is right now. So let's just say it's 0.2F, 0.3F, 0.8F, 1.0F. That's our clear color. And then I want to... Um, um, I want to add B to it, which will, I'll just make it a bit different, 0 0.5, 2, 1, we'll keep the alpha the same. I can be like vec4, C equals A plus B, print out A, make sure it's all good, oh, here we go, I didn't, I did forget it, good thing I, I tested this. Um, let's go back here and uh, remove the reference, obviously to match the uh, header declaration. All right, cool. So, yep, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 1. Um, and uh, C, of course, would be that, which, yeah, is correct. Um, all right, and things are looking pretty good. So, there we go. Um, if you guys have any questions, just leave a comment below. Those are all of our vector classes. We probably won't be changing them for a long time until we move on to more advanced topics such as physics. Um, and when we move on to things like ray picking, for example, and all of that cool stuff and collision detection, we'll need to add um, some methods into these vector classes. But for now, just smooth sailing, and we'll move on to matrices next episode. So if you guys have any questions, again, leave them in the, in the, uh, in the comments section below. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. So next time, yeah. I already mentioned this, but matrices. So that should be fun. All right. Goodbye. Boom. Boom. Okay. So one last thing that I forgot to mention before I go is I got rid of the reference that we had here when we took in the left for all of our operators. However, I didn't get rid of the return value reference. This is important to also get rid of it because what's happening here is I'm basically returning a reference. Uh, Left.add returns left right? And then I'm returning left, but left is a copy that only exists in this scope. So I don't want to be doing that. Returning local references is a big no-no. So I need to basically get rid of these and just return um, a copy of that, okay? That's all I need to do. So we need to amend that. So over here, I'm going to get rid of all these. Don't worry about these IntelliSense errors. It will tell you it's an error. It's it's not. Um, so we'll get rid of all these. Um, yeah, see, like all these errors, like just Right click and go show intel show IntelliSense errors. No, okay, because we don't we just don't want to be doing that. Um, it'll really it'll really annoy you IntelliSense sometimes. Anyway, um, enough about that. Uh, let's get rid of all these. Um, and all of these. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, back over here um, in main. Let's just test this and make sure everything's good. Well, it will be, but you know, we'll test it. And as you can see, everything is absolutely wonderful. So that is it. I'm ending the video for reals now. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow with matrices. Goodbye. Whoa.